In this video, we'll take the time to listen to some of Warren Buffett's advice that is particularly relevant to the investment situation that we will all be facing in 2023. So what is the situation? Well, first and foremost, the market is collapsing. We also have extremely high inflation, which luckily appears to be drifting down at least for the time being. Finally, we have rising interest rates, which are expected to continue in 2023 based on the Fed confirming that they want to bring that inflation rate back down to 2% and that they would not stop hiking rates until they get there. Let's start with the first issue. What should rational long-term value investors do when the stock market is pretty clearly trending down? Let's talk a little bit about how the market is down nearly 800 points this morning. Are you concerned? No, that's actually good for us because we're a net buyer of stocks over time just like I hope food prices continue to drop for the rest of my life as I buy it. Most of your listeners are savers, so they'll beat up purchasers and they should want the stock market to go down they should want to buy at a cheaper price and they have the sensation that they simply feel better when stocks are going up, which is very bizarre. If you're a long-term investor attempting to grow wealth and you're under the age of roughly 55, Buffett's logical reasoning really comes through in this film. The reason being is that you should still be a net buyer of equities. If you're 70 or 80 years old, you absolutely want the stock market to continue to rise. Since you're probably currently at a moment in your life where you're a net seller of stocks, Buffett is right to point out that most people's responses to a declining market are very emotional. People tend to feel better about investing in stocks when the market is rising, but in reality, you should feel better about investing at times like this one, when the stock market is down significantly. This is related to a well-known investing adage that the stock market is the only place where customers rush out of a store during a sale. Consider the fact that we always buy on Black Friday, so why do we get scared when it happens in the stock market? For long-term investors, we should actually be excited when the stock market declines. To hear two examples of people who should not post on websites at all because they are overly sensitive to price fluctuations, click here and here. If you're going to do foolish things because your stock price drops, you shouldn't own a stock at all. Instead, do what I've done, sell. In other words, if you purchase a home for $20,000 and someone offers you $15,000 the next day, you don't sell the home since $15,000 is a better offer. Though I believe there are more of them if you become informed about what you're really purchasing, which is a business, if you worry about corrections, you shouldn't own stocks. After all, if you can't take your stock going now, it's going to go down. However, some people are not actually emotionally or psychologically fit to own stocks. If you own stocks, you shouldn't worry about it all the time. It is a grave error to think of stocks as something that bobs up and down you should pay attention to Wells bobs up and down, so in conclusion, own great businesses and keep in mind that market corrections are a normal occurrence. I mean, the point is to buy something you like at a price you like and then hold it for 20 years without looking at it day to day. If you bought a farm or an apartment, you wouldn't get a quote on it every day, every week, or every month. But what about all this inflation we're seeing? Costs of materials are currently growing rapidly, making everything more costly for both us consumers and businesses. What should we take into account at a period when prices are rising broadly? The best investment against inflation, in my opinion, is to increase your own earning potential. The best passive investment, in my opinion, is a good business. If you own an interest in a good business, you're very likely to maintain purchasing power no matter what happens to the currency. This is something that Keane said many years ago. In his 1981 shareholder letter, Buffett explained exactly what he meant when he said that the best businesses to own to combat inflation have first and foremost an ability to increase prices rather easily even when product demand is flat and capacity is not fully utilized without fear of significant loss of either market share or revenue. Buffett also said that the best passive strategy you can implement to nullify inflation is to find a really high quality business and stay invested in it. Hence, to clarify the second first off, Buffett is merely asserting that companies will perform better during inflation if they are scalable, or able to handle a much higher dollar volume of business without having to invest a lot of money in the business to increase that capacity. For instance, consider a social media company as opposed to a car company. You know, it costs Facebook virtually nothing to show you three ads instead of two, but for Ford or for Tesla to increase their output by 50%, well, that would cost them a lot of money. The business must be able to raise prices without losing market share or unit volume, which simply means that it has a competitive advantage or moat that gives it pricing power. For example, if you go into a drugstore like a 7-Eleven and ask for a Snickers bar, the owner might respond, oh, I've got something the mosque bar at 10, which means that the business does not have pricing power. Amazon can boost the price of Prime by $20, but you can't do that unless you've created something that fits the company's brand and is grounded in the idea that you'll receive a lot for your money. There are several methods for businesses to gain a competitive edge, 
but Costco has based its business model around always having the greatest pricing. Since inflation increases their costs and decreases their profits, they can simply raise the prices of their end products, and their moats should prevent them from suffering a drop in sales. In fact, last year as Coca-Cola raised their prices, their sales actually went up so that's some good proof for you so that's how to handle the inflation. When interest rates are very low, it makes money cheap and easy to get for both consumers and businesses, which leads to more spending, more profits, and more growth. That's basically what we've had over the past 10 years or so, but now on the flip side, we're starting to see rising interest rates, which are pulling the stock market down. If I could lower gravity, which is pulled by about 80%, I'd be in the Tokyo Olympics leaping. This implies that borrowed money is more expensive to get, making corporate loans more difficult to repay and consumers overall having less money to spend. As a result, the difficult climate in which businesses must operate and grow frequently manifests itself in their financial performance, which in turn impacts stock prices. So when interest rates rise, equities typically suffer, which is partly due to firms performing poorly and their stock value declining. However, government bonds are another issue to consider when it comes to interest rates. As a result, risk-free returns are often believed to be US government bills or treasury bonds. As a result, we must be laser-focused on the performance of our chosen enterprises over the long term. In order to deal with a high interest rate environment, let's simply play the long game and buy excellent companies at fantastic prices when interest rates are extremely high. Overall, gentlemen, that is Warren Buffer's advice for dealing with the three major investment challenges that we will all encounter in 2023, a stock market correction, high inflation, and rising interest rates. Thank you.